There it is, mate. We're up. <laughs> Michael Clem back together, buddy. How are you? Wow, mate. It's great to be back on the show. It's been a while. You've been it has been a while, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has been a while, but we're coming together for, for many different things in the future, which I'm excited about, which I want to talk to you about today. But uh, just overall, mate, how, how are you doing? Look, I'm well. I'm well. I'm obviously, you know, now fully relocated in Bali, and I'm, you know, really sort of got my hands uh, on on the on the climb swim business, and you know, obviously from a learn to swim business to to coaching. And I never thought I'd be spending so much time on pool deck, but I'm really enjoying it. And um, yeah, so obviously my my health has kind of led me to to be back in <laughs> back in the world of swimming and working with Swimming Victoria with some of the youth uh, youth pathway programs and um, different schools like Furbank Grammar in, in Victoria. So it's kind of come full circle where swimming was my life for so many years and um, obviously had a bit of a separation after retirement, went into a normal job in retail and um, yeah, inadvertently obviously through illness and other factors um, um, as, and also from, from a lifestyle choice um, I ended up here in Bali and and still sort of running the Clemson flag. Yeah, mate, uh, Bali is a beautiful destination, and I guess that's the that's kind of the exciting thing that we we want to talk about today a little bit is that I'm coming to Bali, mate. I'm coming down there to <laughs> to hang out finally and um, do some stuff with you. So we you know we got together a couple of months ago, and I mean you you've been asking me for a while. Hey, Brett, can we can we get together? Can we you know, do some clinics together? Can we work together? And I've just been so busy and, you know, my life uh, kind of turned upside down uh, about a month ago as well. And I, I got let go at, at my job where I was working in the tech industry and the tech industry, for those that don't know, is kind of, uh, you know, taken a 180 in terms of where it's gone in the past six months with, with the advent of AI. And so my company was basically like, look, we need to invest in AI. We've got to let you know, a quarter of our workforce go or a third of the workforce go. And I was one of those people. So I, I started to reevaluate where I was and what I was doing. And obviously with this podcast, it's uh, things have really taken off and, and I've become kind of a voice for mm. swimming around the world, which is, which is exciting, but it kind of led us back together again of yeah. like this idea of doing some work together. So we're actually, yeah. um, we've started the process of announcing a couple of clinics, but we've got some clinics together, man. It's exciting. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, so look, we're, we were great teammates. We, we're obviously on, on a bunch of teams together. We always work well in that environment. We've done a couple of clinics previously together. And um, yeah, I've been bugging you for, for ages to, to either come, come my way and so we could, we could do it again. And, and unfortunately, your, <laughs> your circumstances have, uh, you know, played into our hands. But yeah, we're um, yeah, we're going to announce that we'll be doing a clinic right here in Bali on the 12th of August and mm. also in Singapore on the 19th of August. So, um, you know, I think it's, it's really super exciting to have someone of, of your caliber from a coaching standpoint. You know, like, like you said, you're, you're the voice of swimming almost at the moment and to have the access for, for the swimmers here in, in this part of the world, in the region, to be able to speak to you, hear from you, it's going to be... Uh, um, super exciting, you know. The appetite for the sport for those of people that don't probably know, um, Southeast Asia loves swimming. You know, especially Indonesia, the the participation numbers are huge. And even at a little meet that I had last weekend, you know, the, just in the island of Bali, you know, we'd had close to a few hundred swimmers just just here. So. Um, so it's certainly there. There is certainly an appetite for for getting this sort of high level. Um, coaching and and high level clinics and 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 people of your caliber. So I'm I'm really stoked to be able to obviously have you it, have you visit me, but also to be able to share some of your the great Brett Hawk wisdom. <laughs> yeah, mate, we had a lot of good times together, you and I. And um, my wisdom comes a lot from from watching and learning from you and and people like you. Like I was. And we were very fortunate to kind of be part of this golden age of swimming in Australia, you know, where we had so many mm. influential figures in our lives. You were one of those guys that were leading the way. And, um, you know, for, for, for people that want to follow in the footsteps of a professional athlete, you, 
you were kind of one of the early pioneers, you know, like you had management and you had um, an, uh, an image and you had uh, results and you, you had kind of everything that every professional athlete aspires to have back in the, the late uh, yeah. 1990s, you know, but you, we, we had a team full of those people too, didn't we? And, and yeah. we could all kind of yeah. learn and grow from each other. And so like this idea of professional swimming really started with you and a bunch of our teammates didn't it yeah it's it's i mean definitely the way you you know you framed that it it's true you know obviously i was very much kind of towards the late, late 90s um through 97 98 were kind of my my best two years in my career and that kind of catapulted me into this completely different lifestyle from mm. you know where in the lead up to the sydney olympics you know <laughs> where certainly a focus of every journalist every kind of most of the people in the public were just waiting to to see what the swim team was going to achieve and mm -hmm. we had you know the likes of ian thorpe come you know just emerge in perth at the age of 15 grant hackett you know um dethroned kieran in the 1500 we you know susie was still still flying and the likes of jeff hugel and Liesl jones just emerging onto the team so we, you know, I, I'm, I'm so grateful that we were, you know, household names, you know, people would go from, we'd literally, you know, they would go straight from the news to, uh, to the 1500 meter final at the national championships, you know, it would be the second highest rating show in the country. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I'm blessed to be able to now, you know, share some of those sort of experiences and knowledge and i guess because i've been out of the world of swimming it's sort of my i guess i don't know if my view is any different to other coaches but it is certainly um fresh and something that i'm i'm still learning and it's you know i've got this outlook on trying to sort of share um share my passion for the sport which obviously gave yeah. me so much yeah well we know where swimming is in america we know where it is in in australia right like the two the two greatest swimming nations in the world really the powerhouses always have been for many years and uh, they're going to go head to head again at the world championships but what what's swimming like in in the asian southeast asian region where you are you know like bali indonesia singapore like what what is swimming in that region well you you, you do have some really strong sort of not only I wouldn't say necessarily clubs, but it's based around a lot of the the expat schools, international schools is, is mm. really strong through, especially mm. say Singapore, for example. And, um, and and Indonesia has a lot of big clubs and they're almost semi-professional, but huge numbers. And, you know, it's right from learn to swim all the way through to elite elite squads and um, so as I said, it's it does become difficult in these slightly more developing countries where swimmers have to make a decision at some point. Am I going to pursue this, or do I have to, you know, I have to actually make a living? So mm. there is there isn't as much support probably for a lot of the athletes here. Um, so it is more more difficult for them to survive on endorsements, and you know the population of Indonesia being you know, close to 300 million, it is very competitive. And once you, you know, once you reach high status in sport, you can um, be quite successful, but it is, it, it is fairly cutthroat. And, you know, I must say, you know, being around Bali and Indonesia for the last few years, the facilities aren't quite there yet, you know, right, so I right. think the, the, um, <clears throat> you know, the American sort of uh, system of three and two age, you know, the facilities are just every around every, every corner here you know there there is some good pools there are there, there are some new ones coming but there is definitely an opportunity to you know that's where what, or what i think is is lacking in, in this part i know singapore's got some great ones and thailand's got a few good ones as well but i think in terms of those uh the facilities which australia has an abundance of as well i think that's probably where we're um in this region southeast asia is kind of um catching up on well, it's always been the kind of the availability too. And so the things that you're doing with Klim Swim now, bringing that into Southeast East Asia and, and, and having this um, chance for kids to learn to swim all the way up to kind of, you know, high school and then the possibility to move into kind of college and those sorts of things. But just, just having the availability for these swim schools to come in and, um, and the impact that you're going to have into the future is, is going to have 
um, a massive shift on, on the culture there. But I'd imagine um, sw swimming is something that is is part of the culture. Uh, like, do, do they, they appreciate swimming? Oh, well, look, to be honest, it's not really. It's, I mean, if you look at the swimming community, they're so fanatical, super passionate, and um, but it, it, it isn't really. You know, they, a lot of the Balinese have a fear of water they don't swim uh, they're yeah um mm -hmm. you know the the cases of drownings in in bali indonesia as a whole are just mm. so high which actually you know makes me even drive this even more so to raise the awareness of swimming water safety it's just mm -hmm. something that is a skill that you and i have probably took for granted you know but there is yeah i, I mean you hear about drownings around here all the time so um, because you know a lot of kids don't grow up near pools. There is no there is no pool fences. There aren't lifeguards on duty necessarily. So, um, and I think it's something as you know as, as, as I guess our responsibility to be able to not only teach the elite but to you know raise the profile of the sport in this region, which you know down the track hopefully will encourage that grassroots as well. Yeah, that's awesome, mate. Well, I'm excited about it. You know, it's been it's been something that I've wanted to do is like get on the road and and travel internationally and have more of an international influence. So this is this your your invitation um, is hopefully the start of something really good for for us and for me. Um, you know, just to be able to get back out again. Uh, I I did a lot of clinics. You know, I worked for a fitter and faster. Um, mm here in the states and and i did clinics for four years so so, so it's kind of like i'm very in tune with like how to run a clinic and what to do at a clinic um and that experience was so invaluable but um but just watching swimming of you know you and i both have a deep passion for it so like teaching is just something that we really enjoy and i've been i've been watching your instagram and and following you there and i can see that you do you just have a passion for the grassroots level of it too you know like someone who's yeah, so elite yeah. someone who's raced the best in the world but really feels more comfortable with those with those kids too and mm. giving back to them don't you yeah look i think i've i've been you know and i think i've, I've been humbled i think in in the sense that i i, I haven't got into coaching and been handed um you know national champions or elite swimmers so um i've, I've trained with some of the Indo I've, I've coached some of the indonesian um, team members for a, for a year or so, but that's probably the extent of it. And I've, I, you know, I've actually the meaning for me, um, I think, got reassured by just seeing a progression in a in an athlete, or seeing their character or personality mm -hmm. change. Or, mm -hmm. you know, we've had some kids that have, you know, like sometimes they they come to a squad, are, are completely shy, don't speak to anybody, and within a couple of months they're flourishing they're you know they they've, they've found their so circle you know their yeah. um their social wellness is just you know through the roof and for me to see a progression in someone's character and personality that sort of and and overcoming some adversity too because especially in early days when they you know they've got a lot to learn and there's a lot of disappointment early on and seeing them overcome that gives me um a lot of sort of drive to continue it so um that's been really rewarding yeah i love it mate um just in terms of like your your personal health how's that going like i know that you you've had some major struggles with your legs lately how are they doing look they've um you know they haven't really progressed in in a positive or negative way i've been pretty stable over since we since we've spoken last i've been very you know quite stable with my health which is a good thing i'm i'm constantly you know investigating other opportunities and treatment options to see if i can reverse the trend and see if i can get some improvement but there has been a lot of technology in terms of um prosthetics and afos and things like that to help me because i'm spending so much time on pool deck on my feet and say five hours six hours a day so yeah. um and you know when i'm literally from my knees down i don't really function all that well so um, it affected my the, my gait, the way I walk, and gave me a lot of back pain. But I've had some, you know, some of the best guys in, in Melbourne and Victoria sort of create some new kind of uh, prosthetics for me that give me some energy return and almost like a fake calf muscle so I can stay up on my feet for a, a lot longer and, and do my job with with, least, uh, with less pain. So 
Um, yeah, so that so I must say it's yeah at the moment I'm I'm pretty comfortable where I'm at, but I'm you know obviously uh, not resting on my laurels. I want to sort of try and get better. Is there anything extreme like um, stem cells or anything like that that you've been looking into? Oh, absolutely. I think stem cells definitely the you know the next kind of direction. There is other um, plasma kind of compounds that um, for autoimmune conditions such or neuropathies such as mine is kind of where it's all kind of heading but stem cells that unknown quantity still so there's no there's not enough sort of data and and cases from from my kind of uh condition crdp that i'm not yet sort of uh not diving into it at the moment but i'm I'm certainly uh very much aware of it so um yeah if anyone out there knows any (laughs) any any cure definitely hit me up because um i'll try pretty much anything <laughs> yeah oh that's good man well i can't wait to get down there with you and hang out and um just have a good time again and and uh, you know get with these kids so so the the bali date if if anyone's in bali or if they want to fly in it's it's certainly available to them so the bali date yeah. is what and how do people sign up for the clinic yeah so the bali date's the 12th of august and okay. we'll do it at the Finns recreation a club right in the middle of uh, Changu, which is a great sort of touristy area, but uh, it's got a, a nice six lane, 25 meter pool, which out of which Clemson um, is based out of. And um, you can contact uh, just info at clemson.com and we'll give you uh, all the information you need. But obviously through, through our socials, yourself and me, yeah. we'll be uh, posting a bunch of updates and that's the first one to go to be obviously when when you arrive that's the that's the first opportunity for to for people to get get their hands on on you but the second one will be in in singapore on the 19th of august at the at the nexus international school which will be uh really exciting um a 50 meter pool and we'll have uh obviously the opportunity for anyone in the singapore region or even outside of that to to come in and spend a day with both yourself and I. So um, again, same same kind of uh, details. Just contact me at info at and uh, we'll uh, I'll send you all the details. But uh, definitely through the socials, probably easy as well. Mate, how many how many spots do you think are available in both Bali and then maybe Singapore? Is there a difference? Uh, look, I think well, you know, as you know, there is certainly a. a I think a, a you know a level of of tradition that you can give up to a certain point when right. then it becomes a little bit messy and yeah. everyone sort of compromises on that. So we like to keep you know once we reach fifty swimmers, we'll probably add another one. So you know yeah. recently we we did that in, on the Gold Coast, which was a a great success, and we got a, close to a hundred kids. So um, so we'll just we'll keep, if we've got if we're uh, you know, if it goes gangbusters, we'll keep adding more. So, uh, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll be announcing another date for Jakarta, as you know. So Jakarta will be happening around that similar period. So, yeah, um, if anyone in, in Southeast Asia wants to host Brett and I, uh, give us a holler and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be there. <laughs> Can't wait, mate. August 12th in Bali, August 19th in Singapore. We, we're going to be in that region. So if you want, if you want Clemmy and I, to partner up, run some clinics together, uh, we would be honoured. We'd love it. So I can't wait for it, mate. Um, yeah, it's going to be a fun mate, one. So. Actually, we should say that uh, our old mate Jeff Hugo will be joining us on the uh, Singapore leg yeah. as well. So for those butterfly, um, you know, lovers, uh, Skippy will be uh, will be joining us for that one. And um, yeah, we expect that one to be a really good one. So for a bit of fair bit of Aussie flavour <laughs> in mm-hmm. Singapore. So um, yeah. yeah, Jeff will be uh, will be on deck with us as well. Yeah, we haven't we haven't truly announced uh, the fact that my girlfriend's coming as well, and she <laughs> is uh, she's a breaststroker who swam for the US at the 2009 World Championship. So she's going to be on deck too. So we're going to have a we're going to have a, a butterfly specialist, a freestyler breaststroker. Uh, you know, we'll we'll uh, we'll get we'll cover every base we can. So yeah, yeah I think the clinic's going to be a lot of fun. Um, can't wait to get down there, mate. So. All right, buddy. Well, listen, um, we'll we'll Mm -hmm. keep uh, touching base. But, yeah, so one last time, where can people reach you? Yeah, hit hit me up on Instagram at either either Klimswim or or myself personally or info at klimswim.com. 
info at clumpsroom.com. All right, appreciate it, mate. Thanks, buddy. All right, we'll catch Thanks, up soon. Bye. See you soon. See you, Bring mate. Bring us up, <laughs> <laughs>